Example 76. All right, this one says, find the probability that z is between negative 1 and 2. Now, this notation here implies that we're working with the standard normal probability curve because z from now on will mean for us the standard normal random variable. So if they say find the probability that it's between these two numbers, and again, it's between because it's literally physically between the two numbers in our statement. That means we're looking for the area on the curve between those two points. All right, so again, you're going to draw a bell curve, right? That's your first step. And once you're done drawing the bell curve, you're going to label a z-axis centered at zero. Then from there, if the center is at zero, you're going to put these two numbers on the curve where they belong relative to zero. So negative one should be on the left because obviously negative one is less than zero. And two should be to the right because again, two is to the right of zero on the number line. All right, so there's approximately where negative one and two are. We don't have to be precise. It's just the idea that we put them on the right side. You know, if it's negative, it's on the left. If it's positive, it's on the right-hand side of the curve. And then we want to shade the area we're looking for. Now, this is saying we're looking for the area between these two numbers. So I will shade between the two numbers on my table. And what I'm doing here is I'm letting myself know I need to find the area for all of the shaded region. That's the solution to the problem, right? Okay, so the probability that we're between negative 1 and 2 on the curve is equal to what? Well, let's think about what we have to do now. We're going to have to use a z table, and let's think about what we're going to get from the table as we go to the table. If I look up 2.00 on the table, remember it always gives me the area from the number I looked up to the center, and that's it. That's all it'll give me. So I'm going to get this area. Now, that's part of what we want, right? We want that shaded area from here to here. But we also want this shaded area. Well, if I look up negative 1.00 on the table, it'll give me the area from the number I look up, again, to the center only, right? So to the center. Well, that will give me this area. Now, if you think about it, my whole shaded area is made up of two parts, this area and this area. If I get this from the table and I get this from the table, I have the two parts that make up my shaded area. If I simply add those two numbers together, I should get the total area under the curve. So remember, anytime you shade across the middle, you will add the answers from the table. So if you can't visualize it from the drawing, just remember, if you shade across the middle, you're going to add the two numbers you get from the table. All right, let's go to the table and look those numbers up then. Okay, so we have to look up the 2.00 first. We're going to move the table down so we can find the 2.0 in this uh, first column here. So there we see 2.0 at the bottom of our table, and 2.00 is the first value. Next to that, we get 0.4772. Okay, so after looking up 2.00, we got 0.4772. Now let's go back to the table and look up 1.00. Okay, so we're looking up negative 1.00. You'll notice the table doesn't have any negatives on it. But that's okay because the left-hand side of the curve is perfectly symmetric with the right-hand side of the curve. So if we look up negative 1, we can just do that by looking up 1.0. So there's no reason to look up a negative value when the positive value is the same exact answer. So if I come here to where it says 1.0, and I look at the number in the first position after, which is the 0 position, it'll be 1.00, which is 0.3413. Okay, so we've got back from the table now, we get 0.3413 for that piece. If we put these two together, we'll have 0.4772 plus 0.3413. If I add them up, I get 5, and then 8, and then 11, and then of course 8. So we get 81.85%, 81.85%. And that is the area between negative 1 and 2 on the bell curve.